How's it going, everybody? Thanks for joining us today. This is Boating Tips Live with Marine Max. We're here. My name's Captain Nick with Marine Max in St. Petersburg. And, of course, the man in the middle right there, good-looking guy with the hat, Captain Keith Lake. Okay. Have a special guest um, today. Yeah. have Tad Wayton from Mercury Marine, new product tour manager. Tad, thanks for joining us. Hey, Nick, Keith, how are you guys doing? Great, Tad. Thanks, I, for, I, thanks for having me. We appreciate it. Always, um, I wish I was... Um, down with you guys, not stuck here in um, in in Illinois, because uh, you can see I don't have the sun you guys got, so I need to be down where you guys are more. Uh, I, I can't tell you how excited I am for today. E ever since this little idea of ours, you know, with with Boating Tips Live came through, I was looking forward to getting Mercury and Marine on here. A anybody who knows anybody who knows me knows that if there's one thing I get fired up, it's it, it's Mercury outboard engines and just. I'm excited for today. I think that a lot of good is going to come out of it. I've got a lot of things that I'm going to pick your brain about. I mean, Keith, I'm sure that you have a lot of great questions too. And um, I'm going to learn a lot today. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to this too, man. I mean, you got Tad here that's, you know, how many years you've been with Mercury? You know, we started in 96, 95, 96 with the little sport jet on the um, C Ray, C Raider and the Baja Blast. Um, yep. the F 14, F 16 with the ones the, with the 170, 50 and the 175. No, I'm sorry, 120, 150 and then 175. So, yeah, it kind of dates me a little bit. I was a, I was a real young guy back then. But so, yeah, 20, 20 plus years. They, yeah. um, they're just the, they're just the greatest company to work with. And I've worked with almost all the other manufacturers and um, it's just uh, Mercury's just my, I'm like you, Nick, you, you cut me. I'm going to bleed Mercury all over the floor. I, I'm going to start using that. <laughs> well, I was going to say you, my, my, I have Mercury underwear on, but I, I thought that cutting, cutting me and bleeding Mercury would be better. So. I, I, I do have a pair of Mercury socks. Good. Good. You're, you're, you're in the family then for sure. <laughs> well, man, before we get going, just wanted to remind everybody, don't ever miss another episode like this. Got a lot of great stuff coming up too. Facebook at Marine Max Leisure, Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, and of course, Twitter at Marine Max. Before we get going here, drop in the comments, one, any questions you have for Tad. How often do you have a direct line to Mercury Marine? All those questions that maybe your sales guy couldn't answer, sorry, ask Tad right now. Now's the time to do it. Also, we're running out of things to talk about. So if you think that there's anything that you want us to cover moving forward, drop it in the comments so Keith and I can circle back around to it in, in another week. So so help us help you guys and let's let's keep everybody out on the water having fun. So yeah, even if you watch this later, just you still go in and comment and we're gonna go back through and keep track and go through the questions and comments and stuff like that. And we'll try to get back to you. But like Nick said, you know, give us some ideas for some future uh, future shows coming up here in the weeks to come. See, hey, I Stephanie. see that Keith, Keith gets here. a comment from a gal. Look at that. He's already hey, got this woman, his woman audience going here, doggone. I'm going to have to start having people call, she got an call awesome in Boston. and send in awesome for me. Doggone. She's got an awesome Boston Whaler. <laughs> so I think I think that we're going to address the elephant in the room right off the bat. So big news coming out of Wisconsin the other day. Huge news, monumental news in the boating industry with longtime competitor Evan Rude decided to stop producing outboard engines. I know that, you know, Mer Mercury had some some stuff to do with you know taking over some certain boat brands that were carrying Evan Root exclusively. So 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 if you don't mind giving us a lowdown on exactly what happened there, how that affects the industry, how that affects the outboard market, and what we can look forward to moving forward. Well, I I I wasn't privy to all the discussions. Obviously, that have been going on probably for months or maybe even a year, a year, year or more. But I think that the first of all. I love Johnson Evanrude people. Again, a, fr a guy who was a mentor of mine was Charlie Strang. He was the CEO of Johnson Evanrude for a number of years. Charlie just passed away two years ago. And, and again, just great competitors, good people. You know, there was a time when Johnson Evanrude built more motors than Mercury. Mm -hmm. uh, there were times when we raced, Mercury raced Johnson Evanrude, and they got to the point where we were all spending way too much money trying to race each other. It was like Ford and Chevy or whatever. All of a sudden, we're not going to now race each other. We're going to race ourselves just because, you know, we would have all gone broke trying to beat each other on the racetrack. So, you know, the guys down at at, um, at Waukegan, Illinois, which is where Johnson Evanrude um, were based out of, great people, great competitors. A lot of the guys from Johnson Evanrude worked at Mercury one time. A lot of people at Mercury worked down at Johnson Evanrude. So, again, good people, great Midwest company. Um, but it's, you know, Johnson Evanrude one time owned Lawn Boy lawnmowers. 
they owned a lot of different tech, technical companies that they made other products that they made motors that they made motors for. But I think in the last few years, um, the amount of money that Brunswick was able to be spending on R and D and growing the category, becoming a hundred percent a a a motor and an out and a and a and a boating company. Um, you know, we don't Brunswick doesn't make bowling balls and billiard pool tables anymore. We don't own, we don't own bowling alleys. Um, I think it was hard for Bombardier who's into everything to be able to compete with the, the fact that we were so specialized. Um, and then, you know, Ficht had a great place, but I think as time moved on, time moved on, four stroke just got that good. Yeah. Um, so I think, it, I think, I think Bombardier decided you know what? Again, I'm just assuming because it wasn't told to me exactly, but I'm assuming they decide, you know what? We need to specialize in selling boats and, and dealing with our customers one on one. And Mercury's got such a great motor. Let's put that motor on the back of our boats and let's let's get people in the water and sell product. I, 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 I believe that that was true, that that was probably the situation. So if it's not true, somebody somebody needs to call me and let me know that I'm that I'm wrong. But I think that's true. And again, I, I, I got a lot of good friends at Bombardier. And um, I think that they're excited about the fact that they they're now going to be selling um, mercury powered mercury powered boats, and their dealers I'm sure are too. Hopefully, I'm out on the road yeah. um, here soon, spending time with those dealers, those Evan Rue dealers, um, educating their sales team on um, on what mercury products are all about today. I mean, that is huge news. I, I remember when I, you know, when I, when I when I saw that news, it's like. Man, it's like the end of an era. I mean, I'm sure that you can talk about it. I'm, I've read the book, you know, the, the Mercury Marine book, you know, where they talk about, you know, OMC, Mercury going back and forth for almost a century, you know, just. Well, they're they're older than us. I mean, we're Mercury's 81 years old now. Last year was our 80th birthday. Um, so they're they're older than us. I don't know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years older than us. Um, you know, Oli Evan Rood was a was an incredible guy. I don't know how you've heard, how many have heard the story. The reason he came up with um, an outboard motor was he lived across the lake from an ice cream shop and his girlfriend loved ice cream and he couldn't row the boat back fast enough um, <laughs> without the ice cream being melted. So he tried to figure out a propulsion system. There had been some crude propulsion systems out already and there had actually already been an electric boat out. Um, you know, I'm talking 85, 90, 95 years ago. Um, but that was all for the love of the woman, Oli Evanrood, um, you know, decided to make outboard, make outboard motors. And at one time, you know, they were, they were the 800 pound gorilla. Um, mm -hmm. but again, Mercury just has spent time and money, um, to, to now become that 800 pound gorilla. They are Susie. Thanks. Thanks for joining in. Always, always a pleasure. Susie owns a Mercury engine herself, a, a 115 Pro XS four stroke. Awesome. Great, great little motor. Great little motor. Yeah. She'll, Nick, have it, she'll have it Nick, forever. She'll have it Nick, forever. You being in sales and stuff, Thomas, the question he's got on here, you know, the best size engine to put on the 36 Aquila, go with the 300 or the 400 looking for performance and economy. Um, what do you think? I've ran a lot of Aquilas, especially with Mercury engines. That's another great relationship there between Aquila and Mercury. I'd say it's a flip of a coin at that point. I mean, if you, if you put those those L six those L six four hundreds on the back, I mean, you're you're going to be so impressed with the top end. You're going to be so impressed with those performance. You know, obviously, Aquila does have the option to go with the three hundreds too. We're talking a naturally aspirated V eight. I can't talk well enough for both of those engines equally. You know what I mean? And and that's another thing that I wanted to hit on. You know, Chad, with you, I get the question in sales all the time. In sales, it's like okay. Nick, new technology out, naturally aspirated V8. What do you think about it? Then you talk about the L6s. Well, they're in their fifth generation. That's one of the most proven platforms on the market currently. It's a really, really, really tough question to answer because because you're going to put those two at the very top, those two platforms. The next thing, third place, is going to be so far down below, You know, it, it almost doesn't even register. Well, my, my feeling is real simple. Always put maximum horsepower on your boat. I mean, just if you can, if, 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 if a few bucks isn't that much more of a, if it's not a big problem, you're going to, you're going to be happier all the way, all the way around. Um, your fuel economy is probably going to be very, very similar. But at the end of the day, if you got 400s, you're at the top of the food chain on the, on the water. 
If you got a pair of 300s, just like everybody else. If you got the 400s, you, even if you're only two, three mile an hour faster than your buddy that's got a, your same boat with 300s, you got to put the 400s on just so you can beat him. And you may only, you may only be going faster than him 30 seconds as you're all out on the water headed from, you know, one restaurant to the other restaurant or whatever you're doing. But man, always put maximum horsepower on if you can. And, um, but either, either way you go, you're not going to be unhappy. You're going to be propped correctly. Um, your fuel efficiency is going to be right. Um, vessel view and everything is going to tell you what your fuel efficiency, your fuel, your fuel burn is. But again, treat yourself. Put those 400s on there and go. Go enjoy. Smile. Every, every time you go, you're going to gas that thing and you're going to be just like a kid on Christmas morning with your first mini bike. So I, I see that Tom also said that it has the foil. That's, I mean, just while we're on innovation here. You're going to be happy with that with that foil, Tom. I mean, I remember when that when that foil first came out, how excited I was to hop on a boat and, and uh, really experience it. And, and it, it lives up to the hype. It does. And I mean, the fuel economy is great. The uh, the top speed is great. But just you know, the number one thing that you know takes people to get used to on catamarans is just the way that they handle. It's different. It's different in a turn. And and I'd say that when you put that foil on the boat, you, you're going to handle more like a mono hull in the turns. You're going to bank a little bit. You know, you're going to cut a little quicker. And, and I think that the foil is something that we're going to see more and more of, you know, across all brands, you know, over the next 10 years or so, over the next decade. Yep. So, really quick, um, Keith, you got any questions real quick before I start blurring them out? You know? Nah, man, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. What makes a Mercury a Mercury? Um, and by that, I mean Mercury makes a great outboard. I mean, I, I don't think that anybody can. I don't think that anybody can say otherwise. Legitimately, okay. Of course, you're always going to have your, your your competitors. But the thing that I love most about Mercury is after the sale. I mean, I, I'm I'm selling boats with outboards on them primarily. After the sale, Mercury is an exceptional engine made by an exceptional company with exceptional customer service exceptional warranties and when you go up to that plant i went up to the plant in fond du lac wisconsin okay and the people that are working in that plant those, those are homegrown midwesterners i guess we could call them in wisconsin and and and, and i'm sure that you can talk about this we talked about this a little bit before tad you got fathers going in there with their sons you've got grandfathers going into that factory with, with their sons and their grandsons or daughters there's a huge amount of female workers in the plant too which i think is extremely impressive because the guys are usually out deer hunting or whatever and in the blood sweat and tears that go into every r red meat eating uh, american that is making those mercury engines that that don't tell me that doesn't have an effect on the final product well, I mean, it, it, it is so awesome. You know, first of all, thanks for your comp, your comments. And I know you, you, we and I were talking earlier about when you were at the factory and it is, it is so humbling for me to go up there and see again, a grandfather, maybe, maybe his granddaughter is up there walking into the same gates that, that their dad or their grandpa before that even walked into him and worked at that plant. And, you know, there's a lot of robots in there today, but we still can't hire enough people. So if anybody's out there wants a job and is in, in Wisconsin, go, um, Go put in a job application. We 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 are always looking for good people, but it, it is the pride starts with our employees. Um, you know, engineering does a great job of creating a new product. We'll put in a, a system, a, a process, a building. But again, it's all it all takes those men and women to go in there and have been going there for for eighty one years to work. But at the end of the day, I think the people that are Mercury people are boaters. Last weekend, two weekends ago, Memorial Day weekend. People, you know, our people were out on the water. Um, I had a hard time getting a hold of some of our employees. I had a couple of questions on Friday and they were already out on the water with their families, whether they're fishing or just boating. Um, so the people that are putting the boats together, doing the R and D and the engineering are, are boaters themselves. Um, are we perfect? No, we want to be perfect. And mm -hmm. we think we're better than our competitors. If there's a problem, our guys work with your people and your people make sure those customers are, are back on the water as fast as, as fast as possible. But today, you know, these boats are about as reliable as an automobile. You know, changing oil is about as simple as anything. You don't, you, there's electronic dipstick on, on all the new, on all the new, the new Verados where you can turn on vessel. You can, you can see what your engine levels are or your engine oil levels are on your one, two, three, four, five, six engines. So all those things 
breed into reliability and performance, sound and vibration and harshness. We, we don't, if you want to listen to a loud motor, you can have captain's call and you can hear, you can hear your Verado a little bit, a little bit louder, more like a pro, like, like a pro XS. So I think all those things go into why Mercury is who they are today. And again, just why Evinrude chose to, um, who are we, who are we going to put on the back of our boats that we own as a company at Bombardier? We're going we're gonna to put Mercury's back there. And I think that says a lot when your competitor chooses you. Um, it probably wasn't price because we, Mercury does, we can't afford to give things away. Um, we have to charge a fair price for it. But I think that that says volumes when your competitor chooses you to take their place. Hey, Tad, hey, you uh, briefly mentioned about robotics. Can you just kind of share with everybody what the plant kind of looks like and what, how it's set up and, and what all goes into building these engines? Well, the front end from, from the foundry, from the casting. So with the new V6 V8 motor, a, a, a lot of reason why we were able to do what we did with that platform. The, just to rewind a little bit, and I guess we've got a little bit of time here. The the L6 and L4 Verado came out. It was was engineered in the late 90s and came out in 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 04. Um, revolutionary motor, but it was heavy. Back in in 05, I guess that was 15 years ago. Weight wasn't such a such an issue, but we needed to shed weight. We were we were we had a great 250, 300, 350 motor. But it was he it was heavier than our competitors in some cases. Well, now we're we're lighter than our competitors by almost 300 pounds, mm -hmm. and we're more and we're more horsepower. But why we're able to do that was through the new diecast molding process. We can essentially whatever the mold is, whether we're building a part for ourselves or a part for uh, uh, another company, a construction equipment company, or whoever we're building parts for at that process. And outs out outsource casting is a huge business of that diecast system, but they, it injects hot liquid aluminum into a mold with 4,500 tons of pressure. So there's no air pockets. It's a perfect, it's a perfect part essentially every time. We were building a perfect part. I mean a perfect. We were building a, a part in about three minutes with this, with this process two years ago when we put it in. I think it was about a billion dollar system we were scrapping maybe one out of a hundred parts. The new system on top of that, the second system that we have running, now has shaved that down to about 90 seconds and we're maybe losing one out of 300 parts. So robots are actually pulling that, um, it's a, I think it's a 35 foot arm reach robot is reaching into that foundry and pulling that block out, whether it's a V6 or V8, and then it actually brings it and holds it up in front of a scanner and the scanner scans that part, and then if it passes, then it goes down and, and a, a robot cuts off two molding pieces, then it goes back and up in front of the scanner again, and then as it passes, it, then it gets put into a, like a carpeted rack, and then that goes across town, and then the sleeves are put in, and then we start putting the crankshaft and all that's in, and it, then at a certain point, it's not done by robots anymore, it's done by men and women. But there's the tool won't let you, let's just say you're torquing the head down. It won't let you torque the head down unless the computer has told you, no, all the bolts and all the studs and everything are properly fitted into that. Now you can torque it. Once you've torqued it, now we go to this step. So you can't get out of sequence, what, whatever. But I think the main, the main area where the majority of the robots, I think it's about 10 acres. And I believe there's just a handful of men and women work in that area. Other than that, it's just robots moving around doing what there is. And we can't, still can't hire enough enough people but it's it's cool to watch them turn liquid aluminum liquid stainless steel liquid metal into a finished motor once that once that motor just to finish what we said after you get the heads torqued in everything's done it all moves around on the floor and actually there's wires wiring into the floor there's no train tracks or anything the little motor moves around like a little r2d2 and it stops everywhere it's supposed to stop it knows where to go and all that's controlled by the computer and the cloud keeps, keeps all that in, in check. And then that motor goes over to like the Kentucky Derby starting gate. And then it comes in and, and people plug it in and the computer brings that motor to life. And it breathes its first breath of air in our factory. Not one out of every 10 or one out of every four. Every single motor breathes its first life in that factory. And that motor has gone through some heat cycles. 
It's probably gone wide open throttle. And again, all that data is stored. And then, you know, my, or part number, um, engine number 2714.5 or whatever its, its serial number is, then as it passes all those tests, and only when it passes those tests, is it moved over and is it created? And if it's if it doesn't pass, if it doesn't pass, it gets a tag on its toe and it goes over there and goes back to engineering and they figure out what went wrong. Was it something simple or was it something major? And then if it's major, which is very rare, then it gets it becomes a cutaway engine for us for exhibits or, or whatever. But it's it is cool to watch that from the foundry all the way to where they're starting those engines, um, where they're cutting gears. I mean, the things that they're doing at that factory are are light years ahead, and they took a lot of their money when they sold the bowling alleys and they sold the, 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 the pool table business and bought a lot of our suppliers. So I think we probably, no question, own more of the suppliers to build our engines than any of our competitors. So if there's ever a problem, a president can call a president of a sister company and say, what the heck's going on here? We need 10 million of these motor, these parts or we need whatever and we don't need them next month. We need them tomorrow. Um, and they have to be right. So mm -hmm. a, our competitors can't do that, but we we can do that because, again, we control more of what it takes for us to make that perfect batch of cookies than just owning the dough. We own the chocolate chips. We own everything. I like that. And, and, and that speaks volumes to the brand, too. I mean, you guys aren't spot pecking engines. Every single Mercury outboard that you'll see on the lot or you'll see in the showroom, it, 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 it's not a question about it. Every single one gets ramped. Yeah. Now, every, now to, to, to clarify that, every one of our new V6 V8 motors. Okay. So if you see the slope, the slope to the um, 7591, 15, 150, the 300 and the 400, old, old, the old gen Verado um, are not, but it's all the new motors. And why that's so important, we talked about this before we went, we came live. It's so we can seat the rings. If you saw that piston, that thing's got an extremely short skirt mm -hmm. on the piston. It's, it's really a high-performance racing piston, and we have to seat those rings. And we can't rely on that being done in the field. If they're properly seated, that motor is bulletproof. If the rings aren't properly seated, there's a potential down the road in two, three, five hundred hours or whatever um, that there could be a problem. So we have, there's still some break-in time. But it's not like it used. To, it's not like it used to be. So, but seating, seating those rings is vital to any motor, to any motor. I don't care whether it's your lawnmower or whatever. You need you need to be careful when you start that engine and run it. Um, but if you do it right, run that thing wide open throttle. Go play with it. Have fun with it. It's, it's there. That's what it's there for. Drive it like you stole it. Yep. Keith, I know that you remember the first time that you did finally drive a boat with the new V6 or V8 technology. I know I do. But when was the first time you finally got a hold of one of those engines and on what boat? God, I don't remember what boat it was, but I just know that, you know, one, the, you know, everybody, you know, the Verados, the original ones, how quiet they were. And then we got these newer ones and just a little bit more throaty sound to it, which is actually pretty cool. But just the mid range on it, when you accelerate that, you hit the throttle on that boat. I mean, it will throw you back. Um, just the torque in those. And then the, the fuel efficiency on them is incredible. Uh, well, Nick, yeah, Nick, you and I were talking earlier about how you could break into Lake X with me sometime and, and see that facility. I was, I was blessed and fortunate to be at Lake X when so many of the boat builders were down there driving their boat, their hull, with the new motors. And it was, as they pulled up after the ride, they were just like kids on Christmas morning, just had the biggest grin on their face. Man, I can't believe that was a 250. You know, that's got to be a 300. You got to be tricking me. Or it's got to be a 350. No, and there were 250, but that's the torque. That's the yeah. difference between inline and V. The reason why we, we, we went with the V is because we needed more torque to get the whole shot of these big, heavy boats. I mean, where are we going to end with center consoles? Is it 60, 70 feet? I don't know where it's going to end. Who would have ever thought we'd had, you know, a 50-some footer with six 450Rs on the back of it? I mean, yeah. that's a big boat, and it takes torque to push to push that boat up uh, up out of the water and and now we don't want just a 50 footer we want a 50 footer to run 80 miles an hour right you know there's and it's it takes torque it takes it, yeah, it takes that they are i mean i remember the first time i drove one and i i remember just getting up to 3,000, 3,500 rpms it was on 25 outrage keith initially this had twin 225 v6s and then i hit it from 
from 3,500 to 4,500 RPMs, and it almost threw you in your seat. That that mid range on those engines, I think, is the most impressive thing on the water. Well, you've got it from low low end to mid range to top end to fuel with fuel economy. I mean, that that thing is the has the it doesn't have a bad spot in it. Right. Um, it's 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 fun to they're fun to drive. They really are fun to they're fun to drive. They are. So we got a question from Chad here. Hey guys, what props would you recommend for a 26 foot center console that has twin Mercury 254 strokes? Now, this is great because the next thing I was going to talk about was props, but I know Chad, I know what Bodie's talking about. He's talking about a center console, um, 26 foot Seacraft actually. And um, he just repowered with the new 254 strokes, um, non Verado four strokes um, with the CMS. So uh, maybe, maybe you can speak to props a little bit. You know, Nick, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I am not a prop guy. I know who to call. I, the guys at Mercury Racing and props and our in our prop guys. I mean, we've got so many guys that are like Obi Wan Kenobi. They know so much. Um, I know, you know, the BoatTest.com's got a lot of places where you can go and see what what guys have tested. Um, the manufacturers really know what props they've tested, and just go to go back to your boat builders and say, hey, what what props did you run? What give it? Can you share that data with me? That's that's really that's the best answer because you know, you know, we only sell we only sell engines to about a thousand boat builders, um, so it's hard for a guy like me to um, to really know what that answer is. But we've got a lot of really neat props. The new eco, the new eco prop is is a great is a great prop. I would um, you know that's going to kind of get your best of both worlds. And I'm still an old school guy. I carry um, I trailer, so I can um, I can carry a prop for when I'm loaded, and I can carry a prop when I'm not loaded. So I'll actually spin my prop off. I just run a just run a single engine, a little single engine boat. So I can um I can load myself for what I've got. But again, Chad may not have that have that luxury to be able to do that. But um hopefully the builder can give him those numbers that he needs to make it make a good calculated decision decision. So you've got you've got Mercury, Yamaha, Chevy, Ford, um, you know, all these competitors and stuff like that. I'm gonna make a bold statement here, Tad. Keith, Tad, back me up on this. I will say Mercury makes the best propellers on the water. Take that to the bank. And I've been to that prop factory too, where they're making those props. And, and I think that that's an undisputed claim about Mercury making the best propellers. Well, we talked earlier and I'm, I probably shouldn't say this because I'll probably find somebody that will, will, will call me out on it. But <laughs> you'll, you'll see a lot of, a lot of Yamahas with Mercury props. Pretty rare to see a, a Mercury with the Yamaha prop. And I think I told you, Nick and Keith, that if you found me that person, I'd buy you guys dinner at Ruth, Ruth Chris Steakhouse together. So there's probably somebody out there, hey, I got one. Uh, <laughs> but I, I have to question whether it was, was really on there. But I've never caught one at a launch ramp anywhere that a guy had a had a had a had a Merc with a Yamaha with the Yamaha prop. We've but as I as I told you earlier, as we as we were talking, you know, Mercury has been racing boats for so long. Mr. Key Caver. I mean, he was a speed, speed guy. I mean, everything was about speed. And we learned so much by going to the racetrack, meaning, meaning boat racing. And a lot of that carries over into our, into our propping. And um, Scotty Reichel and the guys at Props and stuff, they forgot more about props than most people will ever know. I think we're in the thousands of prop molds that we have. In other words, different, different types of props that we build. And going through Mercury Props is it's like getting to go to Santa's workshop. I mean, it is so cool to watch, watch them pour those, pour that, pour, they, they make a, they basically like a, um, it looks like coral um, mold and they pour, um, they pour wax into it and then the wax melts out and then they pour, then they pour the stainless steel or whatever wacky mixture they have to make that prop, what they want that prop to be. And then those coral, shells open up like dinosaur eggs and then here's this beautiful stainless steel prop that now they start grinding on it and polishing on it and grinding on it and polishing on it to make something that comes in a cardboard box that you get to bolt on and and chad gets to go as fast as he wants to on his pair of 250 four strokers um, but it's it is it's a treat to go through it i know nick you said you've been through there keith i don't remember whether you had been through but uh, the the science that goes into making that boat push through the water and do what you want it to do again. It's magic. And we do it just better than anybody else, just because we have been doing it for so much longer. And we're going to racetrack where we're trying to gain a 16th of a mile an hour. Or we're trying to gain this 
in, in a hole shot coming out of a turn in an SST 120 race boat or whatever. And again, all that the consumer is benefiting from that, even if it's on a, a Sea Ray 18 footer or a Boston Whaler 12 footer, all that we learn at the racetrack is benefited by that customer. I, I like it. And, and and like you're talking about, I think that that goes every step along the way from, from, from the very, from when they first cast that block until they put the cowling on, you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about how does that affect the customer and, and, and that's it exactly. It's pride. Well, it, it, it the, the motto at racing is the race never stops. And again, it never stops. We are always going to try to make things better and beat our competitors. And that's not being mean. Um, you know, the first one there is the first one that wins. First one, now they can get to go do something, get to go do something else. Um, but again, racers, you can never, you can never beat a true racer because he'll stay up all night long and be dealing on no sleep. And he's, you're going to get to the racetrack and he's going to be there in white, the true racer, he's going to be there in white, white shirt and whatever race gear and he's going to look like he's fresh he ain't sleeping he's tired but you know what he's now he's now packing something that's going to kick your tail on the racetrack and that's that's what race that that is that's the blood that runs through employees and engineers and all their veins they just we're not going to set second if we are second we're not going to be second very long if you ain't first you're last right 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 ricky bobby ricky bobby go boldly yeah that's that's how we do it. We go boldly. So talk a lot about outboards, talk a lot about props. Um, Keith, I know that one of the things that makes your job so much easier, you know, opposed to the old days. Let's talk about some non outboard advances recently and, and what, and what we think about them. And I'm talking about mainly, but not limited to JPO, you know, joystick piloting. And of course, DTS. I think that DTS or the Mercury Digital Throttle Shift is the most underrated. Um, like when, when you'll go and you'll drive a boat with different controls or drive a boat with a different engine on it. I think that the Mercury Digital Throttle Shift is the most user friendly on the market as far as, you know, just being able to maneuver a boat with one hand, you know, with just on the throttles alone. Um, so what do you want to talk about kind of what digital throttle shift is? Well, just to just to give you a little bit of history, and I guess whenever I, I can't ever give a short, simple a short, simple answer when I when I know the the Paul Harvey rest of the story on something, but but JPO actually drove digital throttle and shift. Really, there, they had there was as as it was told to me there were there were a couple of guys at Water Street, which is which is where a lot of our engineering is done and was done back in the day at Mercury, and couple guys are sitting around drinking coffee. You got to remember our water is frozen um, up in Wisconsin a lot more months than it's frozen down in, uh, down in Florida. Not everything's done down at Lake X and so forth, but they basically a couple engineers said, Hey, what if we, what if we put a pair of outboards on this, on this boat, on this pontoon boat and we could let the, we could let the engines work independent of each other. So they rigged a boat up while it was while Lake Winnebago was still frozen and when the lake thawed, they went out and then said, okay, you put your engine here. I'll put mine here. I'm going to put mine at X RPM. You put yours at X RPM. You put yours in forward. I'm going to put mine in reverse. Let's just see what happens. So they went and they did that for weeks at a time. And they documented all that. And they're like, wow, this is pretty cool. We can do anything on a horizontal plane, but it takes two of us to operate this boat. Right. And we, we can't function that way. So they actually had rigged up a joystick control system but if you it just if you just search joystick control it goes all the way back to almost a hundred years ago where elevators were run by a joystick control so joysticks aren't aren't new but the problem with a non-dts joystick it's cable operated and the old the original joysticks whether it's an elevator or whatever piece of equipment it was cable driven it had a delay so any piece of equipment that you operate that has a two or three second delay. Well, I just showed the joystick here. It took a couple seconds for the machine to move. Now it's, it's got that delay, which is going to get you in trouble. So they're like, Hey, airplanes have digital throttle and shift. This was in the eighties and the nineties or have digital or digitally controlled. Let's table joystick control and put it on a shelf. Let's create DTS. Once we have DTS, 
then we can joystick it. That's why it came out on Axios first, Stern Drives, then came out on Zeus, the, the diesel pods, right. followed three, four years later on, on outboards. So I was on the launch, I was on the launch team um, with, with, um, with JPO. Again, I, I, call, I go back to, I'm old school, so I'm, thinking, I'm saying Axios. But that's why Verado was a DTS engine. So they were already thinking joysticking Verado back in the late 90s when they were creating stern drives with DTS and then Verado came out with DTS. So joystick control was always thought about, but it was on the shelf. Once we had that, then we joysticked it. Um, and once we had DTS, because we had to have DTS before we could joystick. But I, I, I'm a farm boy. I was pulled out of a sandbox to drive a tractor when I was five years old. DCS <laughs> will probably be at my mom and dad's on my grandpa's place and, and throw them in jail. But I've gotten to drive a lot of cool stuff. And driving a boat, again, back in the Axis and Zeus Day. I mean, 43 Dancer with Zeus, to me, is a dream machine. Um, I was there in Naples um, when we, we were... We were running that thing in four and five foot C and you hit Skyhook and the boat knows I need to be over here, but the wave just took us over here, but I'm going to go back over here because it doesn't matter whether there's a concrete wall between me and that. I got to be over here because because the computer's telling me I need to be there and that boat would do it. I mean, they would, that thing would ride a wave all on its own with, with, with Skyhook and to the people that know Skyhook, obviously it's a virtual anchor from the sky. So as long as having joystick where you just give it a command, the boat's going to go there. All that was then enabled through GPS to be the, to me, it's park. As I pull in and I stop, I hit sky because that's my park. But I'm telling you, there's nothing on a horizontal plane that you cannot do with joystick control. Everything has its limitations. Mm -hmm. A pair of Zeus pods are going to do more than a pair of 250, 300s are just because there's more blade space there's more horsepower, there's more torque. So you have to know the limitations of what your machine has. Um, but again, what a, what a fun thing. I mean, you can, you can be going sideways, and if you get a wind blow, you can twist the top of your joystick, and it can, correct the, it can correct the bow. As you're going sideways, you can control the bow. It's, yep. To me, it's, it's playing. There's, you guys all, you're, we're, 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 we know what it is because we've driven it. Um, but again, there's nothing you can't do based on limitation. Now, don't go out in a 40, 50, 40, 50 mile an hour windy day with a 30 footer with a pair of 250s or joystick and think it's going to work perfect. That's beyond what that boat is capable of doing because of the wind or, or current. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the joystick and the docking, that's definitely, you know, made my life a lot easier training people, you know, in the back of people's minds. Anybody can go out and drive a boat around in the open bay or golf. But you're thinking, oh, God, I got to go back to the dock. I got to pull up to the ramp. I'm going to a restaurant. If you can just grab that joystick. I mean, we'll have, have them at boat shows and say we've got like a boat there we're demoing. If we get a 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old kid on there and they get out there. They don't even think about it. It's just like playing a video game. You know? mm -hmm. so they twist their wrist around. They push it up. And it's and it works for them. And then the same thing with, with customers and clients once they see the ease of it. I mean, I don't know how many boats we've sold women on water classes you know we do here almost monthly yep. and we have a, a jpo boat in the water we all get on it we go through and we dock it i've got a boat sitting out back right now the name of the boat is joystick <laughs> she actually she was running a boat she went home she told her husband hey i can do this we got to do it they come walking in the door and he's like captain keith i don't know what you did but i love you because mm -hmm. we're buying a boat you know so yep. it's like it's that simple that it, it just takes the stress and the ease into docking the boat anybody can get a boat out of the slip yeah getting a boat back into the slip even before you throw the elements of current and wind into it it makes a difference and there's no reason why we can't let our wives be driving the boats as much as we do and, and again i can tell you situations where the gals now take the boats out on a tuesday afternoon at two o'clock and the husbands after work will meet the wives at the marina the girls have already sat and found a place to read and are enjoying. The guys get to drive the boat. The girls go to the back of the boat and crack a bottle of wine and enjoy the rest of the evening. And they go to have dinner. And what a great fun that they've had. But if, if, they, if they, the girls couldn't have docked the boat or at least got the boat back in the slip to meet the guys, they would have lost that fun in the afternoon. And what's wrong with that? 
That's a, oh, that's, Nick, that's, Nick that's great. Nick and I every day out here in the intercoastal. I mean, there's there's ladies, women driving boats. Probably fifty yep. percent. I I, I shouldn't say this, but there was a, the funniest the funniest one um, was uh, uh, I, I was up in Boston with Larry Russo at Russo Marine, which is now Marine Max, and some we were on the boat. I mean, I'd spend from sun up till sundown on the boat. Larry'd have somebody stacked every half an hour for me to take out on joystick control, and this lady goes. Honey, we need one of these. And she said, he said, we don't need one of these. I can dock a boat. And she says, no. When you get drunk, I can't dock this boat. Now, you can get as drunk as you want, and I can dock the boat. And I called Larry back about a week later, and I said, hey, how many of those deals stuck? And she said, oh, that husband and wife, they bought that boat, and she's driving that boat now. I don't know whether he's still drinking as much, but he's, she's driving that boat. So I'll probably, well, I didn't say anybody's name because I don't remember the name, but that was, a true, that was a true story. And she said, no, no, I've got the money. I'm buying the boat, and it, it a deal that deal went. I love that. The women are always better listeners in the uh, orientation, nine out of ten times. Well, and the women, in all, in all fairness, they have a they 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 have a softer hand. God gave them a hand like a feather, and God gave you and I, a men, a hand like a hand like a ball peen hammer. So a man's he's going more to ram that thing around, where a woman is going to finesse it. Nice, yep. easy, smooth movements. And again, I've been with a bunch of you guys at the Women on Water courses, and I love those. And I recommend any woman out there that hasn't gone to one, go to every one of them. You're going to learn something at every one of them. Plus, you're going to make a new friend or two. Um, but yeah, what a great way to um, to create that exposure. And I'm the last guy to teach my wife anything. And I love my wife. We're going to have our 33rd anniversary here in a, in a couple weeks. But husbands aren't always the best person to teach their wives how to operate something Absolutely. guys like Keith and Nick and captains and stuff. That's the person to teach them. And again, then they've got it down and it's so intuitive in 10 minutes or less. You've got mm -hmm. it in 10 minutes or less. <clears throat> Absolutely. If you got the toys, use them, right? Exactly. And why get Why not? If, 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 if it's not that much of an expensive, you know, an add on to a boat and if the boat's got it versus not having it, that boat's going to move the front of the line. When you go to trade it in, a, a used one that doesn't have it is probably going to be a little bit slower to sell than the boat that, that does have it. It's kind of like what we had after, after air conditioning, after air conditioning came with cars, the cars that didn't have air conditioning sat there longer to sell. And I know that sounds like an old, an old, old, old story, but it was, it was true back then. And it's true. It's true now with, with JPO. Yeah. It's and again, so much, it's so, I mean, it's so, again, it's, it's now being standard on so many, on so many models. It's probably, you know, harder even to find a boat that does, that doesn't have it, but that even moves into from the digital throttle and shift, just the ease of oper just the ease of shifting and operation repower. If you're going to ever have to repower is, is so much easier. It integrates with vessel view, vessel view mobile and all that. It just, it's just part of it. It's where the future is going, but these new motors, the new V6, V8, some of them are available digital or mechanical, so DTS or not. And if you've got a, a boat that you're repowering or you're trying to save some money, you can go with mechanical controls. But one thing that we did, and I, I'm sure you both know it, but a lot of our customers may not, we put a digital shift actuator on every one of those motors. So even if you buy a price point pontoon boat or whatever with mechanical controls, once that command of that cable gets to your engine, we're, tra we're transforming that command of cable into a digital signal, and then it's going down to the shift actuator to digitally shift that engine back and forth and back and forth. So you get you get a more solid connection of those of those gears. So it's, it's kind of like a little bonus. And again, one thing our competitors aren't doing, and our and our joystick control nothing against our competitors. Our joystick control is just you know we've been out there longer. We were out there twice 100%. as long as uh, twice as long as our competitors. Um, well, I, I struggle with I struggle. And I've got more time. I think I still do. At one time, I had more time with joystick control than anybody probably within the company. But I struggled with some of our competitors' joystick just because it it wasn't as intuitive and had a delay and wasn't it just didn't function the same way. Yeah, I mean, not even to talk about too just the the auto heading, the autopilot features, and stuff like that too. You don't have to go and buy a, a standalone autopilot system. It's all going to be integrated in with your Simrad, your Raymarine, Garmin, whatever chart plotter you've got. You know, you hit the, the heading hold button. It's going to hold you on that course. You can make your corrections through the joystick, 10 yep. degree, one degree. You put a waypoint on your chart plotter, tell it to go to. It's going to lock in on that. Yep. So it's, it's when you just you just say you just say three to five thousand dollars on on on, 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 na on navigational equipment and it's yep. built into the same system so it's yep. seamless there is no NEMA two thousand you have to worry about it's right there and it is it's just that simple you're on heading 
boom, you hit that button, you're locked in. There's no thinking about it. I think we can go to seven different track waypoints. So again, mm -hmm. having all that in one system that's already there, it's just easier. Just, everything's talking to itself um, without yep. trying to make it talk to itself. So the last thing I want to talk about here um, is going to be, I want to hit on Vessel View Mobile. But before we do that, Tad and, and Keith, this is probably more for you guys. We have Dustin asking a couple questions over here. Um, one, jumped on pretty late, newly purchased an 18-foot flat spray with a 2003 Optimax 150. The engine has about 720 hours on it, but runs strong and was serviced at 680. Would you recommend I still have it serviced or can it wait until 780? Well, Keith, I'll take that answer. You can take it. Um, how, how many, what was the lifetime from 680, 680? Is that a year? Is that two years? Um, personally, I like to, I like to change oil once a year. Um, yep. Whether that's whatever whatever it is, I mean, I have it serviced. I don't know whether the hours, whether you had it, what, what your service um, means, the complete service or or just oil changes. Um, personally, if you just if you just got it, um, I would have it serviced unless I could see the service records that were that who did it and exactly what they did. That way, you know your new baseline. You know when the impeller was done. You know everything that it was. They, maybe they did the impeller. Maybe they didn't do the impeller. I would hope they did. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the new baseline. It's a small investment. Um, every dollar is important. But you know exactly where you're, you're starting, especially that impeller. I, I have my impeller changed every year. And I change them more often than I should. But at 100 hours, that's about what I put in on a year is about 100 hours. I'm still changing my impeller at 100 hours. But I know my engine is probably never going to fail me. Yeah, he said oh, it's been oh, a year okay, and a half. Yeah, I get it serviced. Yep. And then you're starting from square one. Yep. And then, you know, keep those service records, Dustin. So when you go get ready to sell that boat, even that stuff is just scratch written on a, on a spiral piece of paper, a legal pad, keep all that stuff in a file. And then everybody knows you did what you could do. And that, that boat just moved to the front of the line. The first person that looks at your boat is going to buy it if you're selling it used. And then when you're going to Marine Max, you're going to trade it in, you're going to get more for it because they know that they can sell that boat with reliability. Cool. Good answer. Second one, let's see. Can you also speak to the reliability of a 2003 and newer Optimax versus the older models? I read online that 2003 was the year that their reliability jumped substantially. Thanks. Yeah, I see that he uh, that he had this, that Dustin had the service records. Um, you know, there's, that that Optimax has been a great has been a great platform. Obviously, we don't make that um, anything that's sold in the in the in the states anymore. Um, even though the reliability jumped on, you know, there still were some of those other motors, high percentage of them. There was always just a, it's always that one bad apple spoils the bunch. Um, mm -hmm. But there were some there were some problems in a, in the time there. But again, that's way been past us. Um, I think again, I think if you um, start with your your new baseline on that thing, and again, you said, it looks like you've got the you've got the records on it. You should you know. Keep it serviced. Obviously, with a, with an Opti, you're, it's a two stroke. You're not you're not worrying about about oil, about oil changes. Quality air and quality fuel. I mean, make sure you're running quality fuel. Always, I treat every batch of fuel that goes in because hey, tomorrow I may not run that boat, but running quality fuel and running that thing. Um, there's nothing I hate more than a guy that's got a 15 year old mower that's got 100 hours on it because he mm -hmm. thinks it's worth all the money in the world. I'm not going to run it until I tear it apart and put a hole because the seals are going to leak. There, it's it's going to have a problem. Um, but again. The best run, the best running tractors when I was a kid are the tractors we used every day. They never, they never failed. So get them out and run them. That's what the water, as I, as I love saying, hey, get out on the water. It's free and go play on it and just take care of your engines. Um, put some heat in it, meaning run it and let it warm up. Then go out there and just go play. Hopefully that answers your question. Well, I learned something. So really, really quick, now that we get these questions answered, Keith, I know you brought it up earlier about let's talk about Vessel View Mobile really quick. Um, personally, I haven't used it much. Keith, have you? I've got it, and I'll log in to when I'm doing deliveries on some boats and stuff. I can check things out real quick. Just I don't register it because I'm obviously not buying the boat. But uh, that Vessel View Mobile app, I mean, it, there's so much that it does. I mean, I'm just flipping through it. You know, I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg on it. But um the importance of that is if you, you get the if you have the vessel view app mobile app and the ability to use it then it's going to log your fuel burn your fuel rate 
your, your hours, your maintenance schedules, all that stuff. But if you do have an issue or a code or something like that, it'll record that. And then your local Marine Max or your Mercury dealer can tap into that. Is that correct, Ted? Yeah, you can, you can tap it. And when you take it back and when you take it in, or even if you're, let's just say you just loaded the boat last weekend or Memorial Day weekend, and you know, your Marine Max service center was open, or you may have trailered um, from Jacksonville down to Stewart or West Palm or wherever, Pompano, um, and, the, and the motor threw a code. Um, and it may be something simple, but you just don't know. You can actually, the Vessel View mobile app will tell you who your closest Mercury dealers are and give you the option. Then you can let that dealer go into your motor and see what the code is and see what may be an issue. And he may say, you know what, um, don't worry about it. Just keep it under 6,000 RPM or just don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. Or, you know what, keep it under 3,000 RPM. I can see where you're at. I got a service guy at XYZ Marina two minutes from you. He's on B dock slip nine. He'll, um, he'll, fly, he'll plug your boat in real quick and um, get you back on the water and, and you shouldn't have a problem. So all that's all that technology is there today. It's a free app. You just have to have the module. Um, it's anything 04, 04 and, and up, um, I believe is what you can, what you can plug it, plug it into. And um, it's, it's more than just a secondary set of gauges. There's so much that yeah. Vessel View Mobile does today. And every week it's no different than any other app that we get from our, that's on our smartphone they're constantly updating and making it do more and more and, more. and again three years from now um you're probably gonna land a helicopter on your boat from your vessel view mobile i don't know i guess that james bond thing where you can drive it and we'll never be able to let you drive your boat from your from your smartphone just because somebody's going to crash their kids or use that for, as a toy but if if you if you have it here's my here's my recommendation i have a i have an iphone I, I would probably fail a test of what all that iPhone would do. Right. But, and the, and the Vessel View Mobile is the same way. I, I recommend to husbands and wives or couples that have bought a boat, each one of you learn something that that app does a week, this week. Mm -hmm. At the end of the week, after you've played around with it, then share it with your spouse or your friend that you have in the boat that you vote with. And then if it's something that's applicable and you use you maintain it and you retain the use of it. Then next week, find something else that it does. And after over a course of several weeks or a season of voting, again, you guys get to vote year round. We have 90 days of voting. So we're going to get learn a lot less than what you guys get to do. But again, over, you're not going to overwhelm yourself and don't, as, as you guys are taking, as somebody's taking delivery of a new boat, don't, don't, don't overload yourself that day with Vessel V mobile, come back to it. Um, in a couple weeks and again then start using one or two things and you're going to find the stuff you're going to use you're going to find some stuff you're not going to use um, maybe have a little club of some of your friends that have a boat with us if you say hey share with me because we my wife shares apps with me all the time of something that she likes or what her friends share with her and again this is no different than that but again there is more there than what everybody will use because everybody's application is different for for boating um, but again it is the coolest tool let your kids let your grandkids you know, I know a lot of people like, okay, kids, leave your boats, leave your, leave your phones in the car or leave them at home. We're going boating today. Well, you know what? There's no reason why the kids can't have all the app on the phone. So today it's Janie's job to watch fuel burn with grandpa or dad or whoever. So the kids now have um, an engagement. You know what? And the kids may teach you something yourself, whether they're your kids or your grandkids, the kids will probably figure something else out that you're going to find. Well, shoot, I didn't know that. Well, dad, it's right here. Why, why didn't you know that? Um, so again, all that's learning stuff, but again, yeah, um, Keith, you and I are about the same age, Nick's younger. Um, if there's anything I struggle with, it's electronics. Um, but that's why I have kids to help yeah. me with electronics. Well, you being a racing guy with that app, you got the whole shot deal in there too. So I could see you and your buddies out there trying to outdo each other. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, so, at one, a half a mile an hour. You've won or lost. If my, yep. my buddy's a half a mile an hour faster than me, I don't care if I got six, four fifties on there. If he's if he's 81 and a half mile an hour and I'm 81 and a quarter mile an hour, he just won. So, yeah, it's um, there's there's a lot. There's a lot to that. I have to cheat. I just have to cheat on the whole shot if I'm slower than that guy. <laughs> yep. Yep. But don't we but don't we have the best customers? It's oh. it is it, we have the best jobs and we have the best customers. And it's yep. so it's so fun. Um, you know, all that's going on in the world right now, people trying to find that safe spot or whatever, I think. Most everything's pretty safe, but as long as we don't 
hug hug everybody's wife or or shake hands with a stranger 20 times and stick our hands in our mouth after eating a french fry or whatever i think we're going to be okay but again it's it's the greatest way to social distance and it's the most fun and some people are just figuring it out we've been figuring it out our whole lives but again it's it's yeah. awesome that's what's cool and we love it because again we do have the best customers in the world and your customers are our customers and our customers are your customers and that's what that's what we love speaking of our customers too i want them to take note that when and if tad gets back up and running in this he's got this new product tour mm. where he'll take to the to boat shows i know you've used to tour around to some of the marine max stores um he's got a truck and a big trailer and just it's a rig and he's got engines in there he's got joysticks in there he's got props in there they've got cutaways they got all kinds of stuff and then you know you can actually sit here and sit down and talk with him one-on-one -on -one when he's traveling around and he takes his uh road road trip um so if tad's around or you guys got an opportunity to do that and stop in and see him please do i mean take advantage of it it's every time he comes here man it's awesome he parks out front and then people driving down us 19 will see it i mean they'll stop pull over come in what's going on and see all the latest greatest stuff so yeah. no i appreciate that we, we love spending time with those people because you know they've all got a story about grandpa's old motor from lake minnetonga or whatever this little 40 horse that we had on lake michigan or whatever that we did and went played on i love hearing those stories um, we've got some copies of our anniversary book that we we give out to people it just tells the whole story and the whole history of mercury marine and all that and a lot of that that's in that book is on mercury marine dot com and I've there's, read the book. there's so many videos of things at lake x just you know sometimes just play around with some of those things but yeah we we love that um, I know we'll be at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. I don't know where we'll be to be between now and then. But again, we've got three of three of these that we run around the country. And again, we um, we're anxious to get back on the road and just get to get to loving on our customers. Yeah. Got a quick question here before we uh, sign off, um, Marie Mancuso. How often do you change the risers and manifolds? We have a new 383 stroker motor, 40 hours on a 2005 260C race on dancer. Um, assuming it's in salt water. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say that, you know, fresh water versus salt water. Fresh water, you probably don't ever have to change them. Salt water, right. just have them, have them inspected. Have, have, your, have, the, have the guys back at Marine Max and you're just doing your, your service, check them out. If you're flushing good and you're, um, you're taking care of them, you know, you can go six, eight, 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. if, you're not doing the, if you're not doing the maintenance, um, it's gonna be shorter than that. We've got C-Core. On, on some of our some of our motors, it's a, it's an option that'll give you four years corrosion versus three years. You know, we still at Mercury, whether it's a Mercruiser or a Mercury outboard, we still use more stainless steel. We use more aluminum. I think we have seven patented alloy aluminums that are ours that we have a, even lease out to other other companies outside of the marine industry. You know, we use the best aluminum. That's why we have the only corrosion warranty. Um, none of our yeah. competitors. There is no corrosion warranty. I hate to say it within Suzuki or Yamaha. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, and corrosion is everything. I mean, stainless steel, I can still show you where stainless steel is stained. Um, and Keith, you and Nick can both do the same thing. So it's, it's all how, how often you, um, how often you wash that thing off and how well you do flushing it. It's kind of like, I don't know, we're all supposed to wash our hands really good. Water and soap's cheap. Flush that thing off really good. And you're going to get more life out of those manifolds and everything else on the boat. Well, well, Ted, I'm fired up, man. I really am. When I go to bed tonight, there's going to be L6 Murados and and, and naturally aspirated V8s flying around my head. So I've uh, <laughs> I've got the Mercury brain on now. So I appreciate you joining us, and and I learned a lot. Well, I appreciate it. again. Always, I love all you guys. Again, I got get again. I, I I still say we all three have the best jobs in the world. And again, all 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 boat people only want to do two things. Meet, meet a new friend and have a drink, whether that's a Pepsi or a Budweiser or a glass of wine. We all want to, we all want to meet a new friend and have fun and talk about boating because we've all got so much in common. We all have so much in common. Yep. All right, United by Water, right, Keith? That's right. Well said. So, guys, don't forget to tune in next week. Our topic is going to be keeping a tidy ship. I know everybody's got their own little secrets own little things that they've picked up along the way of keeping your ship looking like looking like it did today it took delivery so so jot them down send them to us um and 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 tune in next week same time same place that's facebook at marine max leisure 
Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online, Twitter at Marine Max. So, so we look forward to seeing you guys there. So with that being said, Keith, you want to sign us off? Thanks to everybody for joining us. Be safe out there. Thanks, Tad. Look, look forward to seeing you again here shortly. Nick, see you guys out on the water. All right. Hey, th okay. Thanks for thanks for having me, guy. Anytime. I'd love to, love to be back anytime. Go boldly, baby. <laughs> Thank you, man. Right. Go.